this is a narrow root of about 500 grams a narrow root has got very good starches they have got complex starches and when it cooks it can give you a very good colloidal soup it forms a choroid when the starches when the starch boils in water it forms a choroid just almost like a porridge that is what you call porridge but in chemistry we would call it a choroid and um, starch, uh, the starch of the arrowroot we say it is complex that's why it forms a choroid now I'm going to use this half kg half kg uh, arrowroot to make some soup to make some soup and here I want to show us how to peel an arrowroot without uh, endangering our hands when you remove the skin uh, the surface of the arrowroot inside becomes very slippery become very slippery and if you peel and put it in water the whole thing becomes too slippery and if it is hard it would be very difficult to cut it you can even hurt, your, hurt yourself with a knife because as you try to cut it it slips from your hands you see a narrow root comes from mud it's a tuber it's a root sorry it's a root that grows deep right into the soil and when you harvest it it comes out with a lot of mud because it only grows well in the soil which is a bit damp a bit damp so it comes out with a lot of mud again when you take a, a narrow root which is so muddy and you wash it with running water the has become so stinky because the the water from the the skin of the arrow root is very is very stinky we can scratch for a for the whole day and um, what i've discovered the best way to handle an arrow root is when it you get it from the market ensure that the soil is dried up or even if it is wet scrape the skin of the roots and the mud and the top skin with a knife so that it stays like this and then when you uh, come to prepare your arrow root um, just hold it at the edge the way i have held it at the edge and then run your knife from the top to the bottom from top to bottom from top to bottom all all round and get long peels like those ones and you you realize that the skin is left very very clean very 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 white so i'll complete this all the way round and then i wash my fingers and come and clean off this part with a knife and the other top part with a knife and any other place that you still show marks of soil i'll remove them with a knife and then i will be ready to be cut into whatever sizes i want to cut it you see i've finished peeling my arrow root and you can see it is very very clean all around although it grows in mud it's a special way how god have created uh, the processes of making our food this wonderful root grows in mud and has got such a tough skin that the mud cannot get into the white starch white starchy content and you can see after i've peeled it completely it is very clean 
So what I'll do now, I'll wash my hands of any soil and come and clean this top with a knife, cut it off, cut off the other area and any other part of the service that is looking muddy, I'll cut it off and then after that I can chop up my roots into the pieces, style of pieces that I want. As you can see, uh, I have finished peeling and uh, that was a place that needed to be dug out with a knife. As you can see, I have finished peeling my root. It is very clean. I've washed my hands and that's why I'm able to hold it like this without uh, soiling it once again. I've cut at the tips which I was holding with the hard so that I have a bit of soil. and. My root is ready. At this point, it is not slippery. At this point, it is still firm. And I can hold it firmly without endangering uh, my hands, without, my, without endangering my fingers, without the root uh, slipping from my, my hands. And um, I can cut it into whatever type of uh, shapes. Um, it's possible to make uh, uh, chips with the uh, arrow roots. You can also use oven grilled chips. You can also make crisps with the uh, arrow roots. You can cut larger pieces from here and uh, steam them so that you get some steamed uh, blocks of the uh, arrow root. Or you can use uh, the arrow root for making improving on your gravy or also improving on your stew and it can be used uh, in uh, in mokimo the irio which is used uh, which is uh, eaten a lot by the people from central uh, central province in kenya you can it can be used for mashing food and i love it a lot i love it greatly especially because of its um, uh, complex starches, the choroidal nature of the complex starches when it has been boiled with water, the thick soupy, soupy uh, sauces and stews it, it can make or even make my own soup. I can use it instead of porridge, instead of making porridge with maize flour, I can use it to make for me a thick choroid which i can take uh, in place of in, in place of uh, porridge so i'll just now cut up it i want uh, to use this for making some soup i'll cut them up into into relatively mm, medium-sized uh, cubes yeah See, I've cut up most of my most of my roots. I've cut it up into nice cubes, nice medium-sized cubes. Arrow roots at times are very hard to cook. They take longer to cook, and at times, if you cook them together with potatoes, the potatoes will break, and you must might remove your food before the roots have cooked and so it is good to be conscious what sizes of the root one is cutting you have seen this root is quite dry and it is very easy to manipulate it to manipulate it into the shape you want and cut it in the shape you don't want without uh, without it messing around and jumping around and endangering your fingers and uh, because this is a fruit this is a root a food that has come from the shaba i've already i've not washed it so after cutting them into the roots that's when i'm going to put it in the water i wash the rinse out the roots you can see they are very clean they have no mud at all some time back uh, when I started doing, using the, the roots, 
they would get so soiled up and you would have to use a scotch bright to score out the mud from the root with the soap but I have since discovered that this is the best way to handle a root. People in Kenya are increasingly becoming aware of wellness and a lot has been talked about our eating habits for the last several years. And people have been encouraged greatly to go back to eating traditional foods. So an arrowroot is one of the Kenyan traditional food that my parents and our grandparents used to eat a lot of it. We had a lot in the Shabbos. I love my arrowroots greatly especially. I like them best when they are well cooked and a bit uh, soft because um, when an arrowroot is boiled, when it is whole, it takes a long time. You require a lot of energy to bring them to to be well cooked. And even when it is hot, you are never sure whether it is properly cooked until it is ready. If it is not properly cooked, you know there is the irritation. It has an irritation in the throat. It means if you eat an arrowroot, it has been too hard, even when you are eating it. And then you find that your throat has got an irritation. It means that that arrowroot was not correctly, properly, fully cooked. And so, again, when it is so hard, it may go and sit in the stomach in a very difficult way. And you might feel like you have eaten a stone. And again, that is not comfortable because it, if you have such a feeling for many hours. And that's why people say that it is uh, difficult. Uh, arrowroots take long to be digested. But I have ever since we started, we came back to looking for our traditional foods, our parents' foods. I have really discovered uh, arrow roots in a very special way. I love us uh, roots, uh, especially for making soups. We do a lot of soup, especially in the morning for breakfast. We we do a lot of soup in the in the family, especially for breakfast because we are family. Who have problems with wheat, with gluten, we have problems with milk, and so we don't eat a lot of uh, bread, we don't eat bread in the mornings because of those challenges. But we found that roots are very good for making a breakfast soup. Uh, traditionally, people we have uh, taken, they will still take uh, a lot of porridge with sorghum and millet and uh, maize fra, which is still, uh, we still cook that, and I, I especially I love that. I have grown drinking that porridge ever since I know. But uh, I have discovered that when I don't have the natural maize fra, I can use these uh, beautiful starches, beautiful complex starches that have, that form heavy colloids to make my soup and my breakfast in the morning. That is now my washed up, washed up, washed up or cubed uh, arrowroots.